What's up guys, we are live in this stream. I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to beat the defense. I got three fundamentals that is gonna help you big time. Just by knowing this stuff, you're gonna get better and this is gonna give you things to practice. Also, uh, we got, oh, we got the, the stream starting here on the screen. Let me just pause it so we can stay on that ad beauty. Uh, I got a bunch of NHL footage we're gonna go over and I just grabbed random clips of people beating people one-on-one -on -one, and you can see what they're using and how it, you can drop that in your game because you know, you're spending what, half an hour practicing every single day. You wanna make sure you make the most of that. If you're just practicing, practicing random things for whatever reason, it won't really help. But this, it's gonna tie your practice into moves that actually work. That's gonna help you get a lot better. So let's start with the basics. Number one, what do you need to beat the defense? Uh, also, we got your, your stream going right here, so I can read your comments as, uh, as they come through. We got Giuseppe44, we all haven't skated though. It stinks, we haven't skated, but we will. You'll get on the ice, you can practice these off There's the ice. There's some places that are opening up. Slowly. Yes, hockey is practice. coming back, we have hope. I've seen it in some states. Yeah. All right, number one thing to beat a defenseman is speed. That's it. You get speed, you don't need any fancy toe drags through the legs, any of those awesome moves that look sweet. You don't need them. Get speed if you have a speed differential. If you have more speed than the defenseman that you're trying to beat or the guy you're trying to beat, you can just boop, wide move, go around and protect the puck. That's it, simple, right? One crossover, you leave him, leave him in your dust. All right, so on the ice, you can work on it. You can work on it off the ice as well. I should I actually should have grabbed a puck. Let's go with a, uh, this green biscuit. I like this one, it's red. Swifty 50 says she skated. Swifty 50's been on the ice. See guys, there's hope. All right, so number one, when you have speed, all you really want to work on is moving the puck quickly and that lateral movement. So I'm going to say you are you are the uh, the defender. Actually, let's use the hockey shot extreme defender because it's more extreme, right? So, so I'm here. All I really need to do if this uh, player is caught flat-footed is move the puck quickly, one crossover, and I'm gone, right? You, it, it, exactly. By the time you do this, boom, that's a move. That's all you need. On skates, you'd be like beside. Exactly. If if you're count like if I'm coming at him, boom, boom, boom. It's just move the puck, crossover, and then boom, crossover back here. If I want, I'm already behind the guy, right? And and we can add to that if we want to throw in. Say the guy has like. If he's completely flat-footed, boom, step around, protect the puck, you're gone, right? Maybe he's got a bit of speed, he's backing up, but you have the uh, speed advantage. That's what you're looking for, speed advantage. That's why it's important to work on your skating. Now you could throw something else in. You could move the puck this way first, then go that way, because it just adds a bit of deception, right? They're gonna move their stick, they're gonna move their feet. Uh, they might shift their body a little bit that way, and then you take that lane. Unless you wanna go this way, right? Then we're gonna boom, right? It's just a quick, that's all you need. And it could be something as simple as just, just that with the hands, right? It's, it's just a quick movement of the puck. If you want to really sell it, you can throw the body weight, you can shift your weight, and then what it does is it, it, it leads to a more uh, explosive movement. I'm going to move a little more to the middle so I can go one side or the other. Oh, sure. Right, so it's going to add more deception if you move, shift your body weight, but also it's a two for one move because you can load up this leg and explode this way, right? If I'm just moving my hands, boom, and then go that way, or boom, and then go that way. It's not very convincing, exactly, and also I'm not loading my legs up, so it, it's, it, it looks better, right? It's more deceptive, you're giving all kinds of cues, you're gonna go this way, plus you load that leg up, boom, so you can get that lateral move, movement and keep that speed up as you deke this guy, right? So number one, speed advantage, that's what you're looking for. And we're gonna go over a lot of NHL footage and you guys will see this. And we'll watch it together. You can let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, let's see, McDavid took Barzell too easy in the All-Star skills. Oh, we're talking about speed, oh, right? Yeah. And, and you know what, it used to be like the guys that were the best in the NHL, they might not have won the, the speed competition in the skills comp. Like Gretzky, I don't think ever won fastest skater or was even in the running, yeah, right? But he, the guy, he could, <laughs> well, I, I reviewed the old ones to see, I'm like, who was the fastest skater in like the 80s? And it was like Mike Gartner or something, right? Um, good players, but but not like the best in the league. Right. But now the best guys in the league are also probably the fastest or, or close to it, time, right? Yeah. I mean, Ovi's pretty quick. He's got that explosiveness. But to be honest, like uh, Ovi and Stamkos, they pretty much hammer pucks in from the top of the circle. Yeah. Like they just got they really have a, good. They have a house. They have a specialty, like yeah. their sweet spot. Feed me the puck at the top of the circle. 
Angela Smith, Brady said hello again, coach. He's been practicing. He said, tell Mason hello. What's up, Angela? Thank you so much. And hey, what's up, Brady? Thanks for uh, saying hello. Uh, Kabir asked if we had his video. Ah, uh, Kabir, I saw your video on Instagram. Man. Some you... people were asking about the Google uh, Classroom. Oh, yeah, yeah. The Google Class, if you guys look in the video description, I put the class code down there. Uh, I, we're trying to make a community where it's just like free hockey training. I'll be adding assignments there. So you guys, like, you know, maybe I'll be like, hey, this week's assignment, shoot 100 bucks a day and work on this specific thing. So if you guys want like that, that extra motivation, uh, do things as a group. Do, yeah, yeah, like we're, we're doing that. Uh, Zoom. Uh, guys, if you go to the link in the video description, add the, the Google Classroom, and it'll take you to that page. I actually should have brought it up on here, Google Classroom. Oh, right. I don't know if I'm logged in. Here we go. <laughs> I'll show you. Okay, watch me. Do, do what I'm doing right here. So you're going to scroll down. Video description, we got Google Classroom. There's the class code right there. It's A7 Hizzy. <laughs> I picked a cool one. I just hit, kept hitting refresh. A7 Hizzy. All right. Uh, will this open a new window if I long press it? I don't want to. Oh, look at that. Now I got to log in and all that jazz. What's your password? We'll get, we'll get Hayden to do that. Okay. So number, number one. Uh, oh, and Braden Marshall, I saw that he had already joined the classroom. Boom. Uh, yeah, and, and we'll, we'll, I'll do a review of, uh, we we'll got, look at you, if you upload like a foot footage of you trying out the, yeah, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll log that in. Um, yeah. this is just the lesson part and then we'll start practicing as we go through the NHL footage. Uh, so number one, speed differential. That's what you want to do to cook the D. Okay. If you don't have that speed advantage, the guy's matching your speed, which kind of tracking you as they're coming down the ice. What do you want to do? Number one, manipulate his stick, get him to shift the stick. Right? You might think, oh, I'm going to try a toe drag. I'm do all of these moves that you're doing, you are, it all boils down to trying to get the player to manipulate their stick or manipulate their feet. Right? You're trying to shift. You're trying to, you're trying to um, influence that player to do something, and, and you know what they're going to do, and then you take advantage of it. And you don't really think about that, but when you watch all these, all these uh, NHL highlights, you're like, oh, yeah, okay, I see it now. I see it now. And the trick is to, do, to practice so much that you don't even have to think about doing it. You just automatically process that, right? Yeah. But by knowing it to start, it just helps you get there. It's kind of like, um, you know, at the beginning you learn that you'll have to manipulate their stick and their feet. Slows you down a little bit because you're thinking about it. After right. you practice enough, then blocks it's just know. like, it's, it's, um, it's like walking, yeah. right? Or something like, it's like juggling. You don't yeah. think about juggling it, once you know how to do it. Yeah. Right. And then you just recognize these things. You, you, you figure it out, you process it at like a, a fast speed mm -hmm. and you're, you just know what to do. Well, that's like the guys I was just telling you the other day on my men's league. They're like, how do you make it look like you're not even there? Yeah. And it's like, I don't know. You just kind of, <laughs> it's, it's, it's just, it's it just comes hard. naturally to you. Right. Because you've, you practice enough. You play like enough pickup hockey, but yeah, just starting by knowing you want to manipulate their feet. You want to manipulate their stick. And it's a little easier to get to manipulate the stick. And I might as well pull up the, the footage here. And you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to log us in to uh, the, the, the classroom. I'll just do it through my computer because it's a little easier. Yeah. Uh, we don't want to be in this one. Hopefully, it doesn't log me out of the, uh, the Google thing. <laughs> Let me know in the comments, guys. Right, let's, let's see what the password is. <laughs> it's actually, uh, I have to be under this one. Let me know in the comments, guys. Who do you think is going to win the Stanley Cup? Playoffs are starting soon. You can't oh. even do a normal bracket now. No, here we go. So this is team how to hockey off ice. We already got 28 students. That's sweet. Uh, this is the, the Google Meet link right here. So I'm going to click on that, bring you guys up, and we'll see who's joined it. Uh, oh, I think I might have to approve everybody. Oh, yeah. We, I meant to look into that. <laughs> <laughs> no one else is here. Let's just click. Oh, no one is here. Okay. I think I might have to uh, accept, accept everyone. Okay, allow, don't allow, whatever. Allow this. Oh, remember this. Yeah, here we go. Entire screen. People can see stuff. Gotcha. All right, so if you guys want to uh, stick handle uh, and, and join along with the training, I need to get this ad out of the way. Uh, if you guys want to stick it, <laughs> there's someone pulling their kid out of the bed. <laughs> That's weird. Here we go. We'll, we'll leave it right there. Uh, oh, here we go. Who's going to win the, the cup? We got Wild Canadians, Bruins, Avalanche, Tampa Faux Show, Swifty 50 Big up. Leafs are going nowhere. Come on, Penguin Videos. Uh, Big Bad Bruins, of course. Swifty 50 picks the Bruins. Um, I think the Bruins always have a chance. They're, they're, they're a tough team. They, I think they have the most grit out of any team. 
They're, they're definitely in a playoff, playoff team. Playoffs, this year they were a good regular season. That's what I'm saying. Uh, in a situation like this where you, you have a little bit longer to go, right, because the, the seed round, they got a chance. I think Avalanche have a pretty good chance as well, and Oilers as well. Because Oilers haven't seen playoff hockey in a long time. Oh. McDavid's hungry. Dreisaitl's hungry. If I they see that. If they come together and they start playing better than they were in the regular season. What is it, them versus Chicago the first I, round? Yeah, I think so. Let That'd me know. That would be an interesting... Uh, TB, TB Lazy, where's the meat code? It's just down here, guys, in the uh, description. Bah, 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 bah. And then to join the video, you just uh, give it a little clicky click right there. There's a meat. Boom, and we'll, we'll see if anybody is uh, is in. I don't know. You, last time I had to, like, um, accept everybody. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll play oh, around with this. presenting, though. Maybe stop presenting. <laughs> Maybe that's why. Stop presenting? I don't know. I don't, I don't know why that wouldn't matter. I think that would be presenting your screen. I don't know. All right. I'm not sure. Way to go. Are you trying to join the Google Meet right here? What is this amateur hour? <laughs> we'll just go join now, just so we, we can see you guys. Okay. We'll just click out of this. Um, <laughs> we'll see if it works. If not, just follow along. Yeah. <laughs> Let's follow, uh, or let's uh, fire up the, the ah, video go. review. Coach's eye. Yeah. If you guys want to practice along, uh, I got to reset this. Let me reboot. She don't like it. Analyze this footage. Here you go. All right. So talking about speed differential, and, uh, manipulating stick, manipulating feet. So we got Keller right here, and we can see what he does here, where he's carrying the puck. I guess I should just draw on the screen. <laughs> he's carrying the puck, uh, sort of like 45 degree angle. He shifts it to the rear, right? He, he buys himself a little bit of extra space, but he also threatens a shot, right? He's a, I'd say he's a dual threat here. Threatening a shot, threatening a pass. Okay. He's got a, that open stick. Right, now this defenseman has to make a read. What's he gonna do? He just saw that he, he shifted the puck from here to here and there is a guy coming down right there. And this defenseman says, yeah, he's going for the pass, right? And he, sh he moves his stick, right? And that's what Keller's looking for. He's trying to manipulate the stick because right now this defenseman is taking away the shot, okay? So just it, it's just a simple uh, bit of moving the puck back, manipulating the stick. Right when this defenseman starts moving his stick, Kel to reach out of it, yeah. right? That's when Keller drags it around and he pulls it in and the thing with pros is that they're so good that they can calculate this type of stuff within like uh, millimeters and he will just clear his stick right he's opened up that lane now he's taking it to the net defenseman comes back but Ke Keller wants to make that pass he tucks it right under his stick over to this guy who's streaking in and boom goal all right, so we're going to take a look at that from the other angle. And this actually gives us a little bit before the goal. Which even has a better lead up. Too. Right, so, so Keller uh, is coming down here. He's got a bit of speed, but he's got two guys on him. All right, so what's he going to do? And right here, I think he, he sees this lane. Talking about uh, manipulating D, uh, we talked uh, in an earlier stream about looking for those triangles. Right, so, uh, you know, here is a triangle if the stick is out like that. We could see a triangle, and if we were at a different camera angle, you would see a triangle. Oh, not the right one. Okay, let's try the clicky, clicky, clicky. There we go. You would see a triangle sort of like right there, right? It's stick, legs, boom, and... Right, or the extreme defender is a good example too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I just thought this would be in camera view, right? So Keller's looking for that triangle. He tucks the puck just under it, and also he's manipulating the stick, right? He's coming down, guy starts swinging a stick, he looks, boom, okay, now he's got him. And if you look at the feet as well, so what I always teach is to go for the heels. So this guy's feet are pointed this way. You wanna, I would wanna fake like I'm going this way and then bring it that way. You fake it to, to get the guy to continue to really uh, commit going that way, and then you're gonna look to go to his heels. And that's exactly what he does right here. So he tucks it under that triangle, takes it to his heels. This guy's out of the play. We got another guy to eliminate, all oh, two guys to eliminate right here. So what are we gonna do? We got uh, puck movement, right? And he times it at just the right moment. He moves the puck back a little bit and it buys it's him a little. He also threatens a shot too. Right, yeah, it's a dual threat there. I'd say he threatens the shot and the pass. 
gets him to move his stick, and then just clears it. All right, let's uh, zoom out a bit. There we go. So that's essentially what we're trying to do. And if you guys want to turn this into a drill, work on it at home, you could, you know, set up something similar where, okay, so I've got the hockey shot defender. So what, what happened there, right? You've got the stick, you're carrying the puck in front, right? You move it back and then around, right? And that's the move right there. That's pretty much it. And you want to have it so you're working on your hands, your feet, and also the brain, right? You want to create that scenario where you're thinking about when would I use this situation in a game? So you could think of like your similar situation there. You're approaching the net, you carry the puck here, you're carrying it in front uh, to sort of bait the defenseman. Yeah. You pull it back, you look for that reach, and you could even think of the defenseman uh, swinging his stick at you. And that, that uh, gives you the cue to toe drag around, right? So again, you're here, there toe it in and around. And, and you want to add that toe right there, right? Just roll that top hand and toe it in to buy yourself a bit of space. Because when you hold it out here, the fenceman's going to be going for it right there and you have space in this area. So if you just go like this, you'd put it right into the fenceman's stick. You want to bring it in a little bit first and then go around, right? So there's a little drill we could work on right there. I'm going to see if any of you guys have, uh, have tried to join into the, uh, the Google link. I think they need a yeah. You need a, meet, a code for Google Meet. I thought that it was all up there and you just have to click on it. I don't see anybody uh, trying to join in. So I, I uh, botched this one, guys. I'm sorry. So you guys just practice without the, uh, the video review. Uh, let's, let's go back. Sorry about that, guys. We'll figure this out. Um, we'll just go through all this footage and I'll take little breaks and show you drills that you can do. Come back, visit it, and then you can just keep on revisiting the stream, finding new drills to do. So there's one for, uh, for that move by Keller. And you could even throw this one in here as well. Um, so right there, the defenseman is, uh, the feet are this way. You wanna go to the heels, right? And it's good to, to kind of bake that into your training. And Keller's a lefty, I'll just do it this way, right? So. Uh, I'm along the boards. I want to get to center, right? I'll move the puck here like I'm going to drive along the boards. When I see the defenseman swinging a stick, you tap under, right? You're looking for that triangle to, uh, to ex exploit that, okay? And you want to um, manipulate the defenseman's stick. So you could kind of look like you're going to pass and then bring it this way. That'll get him to start swinging his stick, right? And that's following your mo movements. Exactly, right? Because because if, if you're carrying the puck like this, he might already start to be angling you off and you won't have that option, right? If his stick is there. You wanna kind of have his stick out, right? More like this. So you could kind of be, be skating like this, bring the puck this way, and then as he swings, you bring it under. Nice! If only we had a defense with like a swinging stick or something. Yeah. I mean, uh, by the way, if you wanna see that video, we, uh, we built it. We built a, a defense with a swinging stick. It, it works pretty well. Uh, we're, we're just editing that video right now. Well, not right now, but all, all day today. All, all day today, we were working on that one. Um, there we, so there we go. And, and you can really see the, uh, the, the move of the puck right here, right? He goes back and uh, for, right, right there. Right, so he goes whoop, back in, forehand, suck in, and then passes it across. Oh, here we got McDavid. And actually, I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to pop over to the uh, stream to see what you guys are saying. So we got this interaction going on. Um, yes, Giuseppe says, practicing my living room right now. Love to see it. Uh, we got Kyle Fletcher. A good way to trick the defenseman is by shoulder and head fakes. I really do like that. And I find um, it's like the, the more they're kind of on you, the, the more you have to use those moves. But they do work. If the guy's flat footed and you just throw like a quick head fake, that's all it takes to shift them just a little bit, and then you're one step ahead of them. Those little fakes, those things of deception, it, it, it's what uh, buys you that extra time and gets you one step ahead. By the time they're reacting to that little fake, you're already doing something else, and that's when you get the guys breaking ankles, right? Um, Brenner says to watch their waist, their hips, their hips or waist, that's, that's good, right? I like to think of, um, of their feet. Right, whatever direction their toes are pointed in, that's that's kind of the way they're going. But yeah, like if they start to, to that's another cue, and it's good to, to have that in mind. Like if they start to twist this way, that actually kind of moves before their feet would move. Yeah, I kind of like that, Brenner. Um, 
Brady said, can you do an NHL video game for a live stream? How do you know SPHL Huntsville Havoc hockey? Oh, or do you know Huntsville Havoc? I've heard of Huntsville Havoc for sure. Um, Penguin Video says, if they don't bite on a toe drag, I fake the toe drag and push the puck the yeah, other way. I've done that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I actually, I found a video of that. I don't know if it's in the stream. Um, Chris is saying, what other tells would you look for? I'd say the top three that you're looking for. Um, oh, I guess like when you're trying to deke the guy out. Stick and feet is basically what you're trying to manipulate. I think tells, you're talking about more like a triangle, right? Look for the triangles, look for this, this stance, right? The triangle between the feet, triangle right there. Um, One thing that I'll do too is, um, depending on the skill of who we're playing against, yeah. a lot of times the D won't be like looking in the right direction. So they'll be watching, if they're, if they're watching the puck, yeah. or if they're looking a certain way, you can be pretty sure that they're gonna like try and bite there. Like, Fair. If they're juicing, like eyeing up a poke check, you can kind of tell if you just take a quick glance at their eyes or their face. Nice, I like that, uh, that idea. It's, yeah, look, look at their eyes, where are they looking? Um, I guess you could also check position, right? So we'll get you spin around here. Speed, stick, feet, these are the important things. Subscribe, I should write subscribe in there. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, so we got the rink within the rink. If you connect all these dots, we talked about this before, right? It's a rink within a rink. If you see a guy outside the rink, then you can like fake, like you're even gonna go more outside and then take the center. Just looking at their positioning, looking at their gap as well. How good is their gap control? If they're giving you a lot of space, right? If it, uh, like, if the guy backs like way up, just take the space. You don't have to deke him, right? Yeah. Just, you know, if he's backing up a lot. Exactly. Once, once you gain the zone, if he's backing up a lot, just slow down, right? And then he's going to be like, uh-oh, right? That's what McDavid does if he has the, like he creates the room by making yeah. him back off. Because sometimes you come charging down the ice, the fenceman's like, oh, no, no, no. And they start backing up, yeah. right? And then you keep on gaining speed and eventually you just meet and they have a, an option to try to take the puck off you. Right. But if you see them like kind of like getting back as far as they can, if you slow down, now you can wait for your team to attack team with you. Sure. Right. You. That's why like some slow players, like are not necessarily slow, but not the fastest players sometimes can even make be effective. defensive look silly just because they're changing yeah. that speed. <laughs> that's kind of like the other side of the speed differential. Yeah, exactly. Right. You think of it having the speed advantage going faster than them. But if they're going really fast and you start to slow down, now you've created some more deception. Yeah. They have to read, right? So if this guy's backing all the way up and, and then you start to slow down, he's like, oh shoot. Now he's got to decide, should I stop and go at the guy? Yeah. And if you can get him to hit the brakes and then kind of like lunge at you and you just boop, boop, now you're gone, right? Yeah. You, you can uh, really eliminate a guy from the play that way. So let's talk about McDavid here. Oh, this one's a simple one. So obviously he's got the speed advantage here. You can see he's, you know, a couple stick, maybe, uh, a couple strides behind this guy, but then one, two, three, now he's shoulder to shoulder, so he's got the speed, and he doesn't really do anything fancy. All he does is he pushes the puck a pretty d good distance away from himself. And a lot of players, they like to just hold the puck in a comfortable area. So for this one, I'd recommend working on pushing that puck. Look how much he leans to keep control of the puck. Right? A lot of guys might lose the puck into the corner here right. if they're not comfortable with this, but he's, he's balanced, right? He's reaching, and you can see uh, if you look at his um, hands. This is a really good trick to extend your reach. Some players, they get so locked into the, like this grip right here, and they'd reach, they're reaching for the puck, and they, and they don't get it, right? Extra. Well, now all you got to do, if, if you loosen on that grip, whoop, whoa, I just got a few more feet, right? So if I'm going to try to get this puck right here, if I'm reaching and I can't reach it, just loosen up your grip there, bud. Now, now you got it, right? And that's exactly what McDavid is doing right there. If you show, show him right there, right? You see that reach? And you see that reach, right? So it, it, it's just this. So you could work on, like simple move right here. Uh, I would do it the other way so you can get the shot after, but just, just for your sake, right? So just, just work on kind of pushing the puck and then reaching and pushing, uh, pushing around, trying to protect that puck, right? So, so maybe a fake, move it this way, reach, control, and then go back to a shooting, right? Because then you have to adjust your hands to control the puck after you get past. Another thing that I like to do sometimes is um, when you're practicing stick handling, yep. is push it away from you far, yeah. reach and pull it back in. So right. Used to oh yeah, like there, and then, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, toe drag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like you'd be here, you'd push it out. Yeah, yeah I like that. Like that. Yeah. Like 
push it towards me. Oh, okay. So I'm going to put it this way and then yeah. reach, pull it. Yeah, I like that because it's like, uh, basically my philosophy for stick handling is you want to get complete control of the puck around your entire body, yeah. right? So the more you can extend that reach, the more uh, dominant player you will be, right? If, if someone bobbles the puck and it bobs out there, if you don't know how to get that puck, you never practice it, that's a stick lift and you're done, right? Or, or like some guy just out muscles you. But if, if you can just, right? Oh, thank you. You're going to collect a lot more pucks. And the, the more you can extend that reach, the better you're going to be. Right. Obviously, McDavid has that. So let's see what he does. He comes in, another stride. He's around the guy. He, and see how he sets up his hands now, right? He yeah, doesn't have that. The... He's readjusted. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've seen this one before. Pulls it back. Boop, pink. Oh, did the same move against uh, Morgan Riley. Yeah. Um, not not this move. He so he deeks Morgan Riley. He comes in against uh, Anderson, yeah. right? And it's. Well, if you haven't seen it, I don't know what hole you've been living <laughs> But this is nice, and you can see. So McDavid comes in here. He's uh, he's threatening the middle, right? Let's look at the defenseman's stick. Paid attention to these things. So defenseman's doing a pretty good job. McDavid's trying to get to his heels, right? And he sees that the defenseman moves the stick and starts to pivot this way. And then he's like, okay, I just got to keep it out of his reach. And that's what a lot of good players do. I mean, he could have tried, like right here, he could have tried wide under the stick deke. I uh, think the important thing is that he, regardless of the speed he's going at, he recognizes how fast he's going in comparison to them. He's like, okay, I'm already pretty close to even. I know I can beat this guy. Well. Yeah. That's pretty much like... Yeah what he was thinking exactly but i mean he could have like what i see when i'm coaching like peewee hockey and stuff force the move too much. If, if this guy's back here and he's got speed he's gonna look at this guy he's like oh i'm gonna try to toe drag him or i'm gonna try to put like he'll skate right towards the the player right. just to try to deke them out instead of using right space, and right? mcdavid he, he knows he's got the speed he's like okay i got that i'm gonna get past him and he sees that this player is going to try to go for the puck and that's when he takes see that crossover yeah. He's going to gain a little bit of, oh, let me. A little slight backhand to put it to the Ex space he needs. Exact. Oh, my God. I'm trying, to, <laughs> I'm trying to go this way. Here we go. Right? So we see where he's carrying the puck is right there. And then when he sees this guy uh, trying to make a move for the puck, he's he crossover. Right? See this crossover right there? He's gaining some, some, some space. Right? Um, and then he keeps his speed. And look at that reach. Yeah. Right? So he just put the puck where the guy can't get it. It's so simple. Just, just keep the puck out of the danger zone. Stream over. <laughs> just, just keep the puck out of the danger zone. Right there we go. He recovers and then goes in. Oh look, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go cross crease backhand. No, change my mind. Forehand. And the Tink. thing is, he will go to the backhand. Oh yeah, he can. Yeah. The time. It just depends where the goalie is. I want to do this stream just about like eliminating the defense, but right there, like. He's making a read. How quick is Flurry moving to the other post? If he hangs too far, far on this post, he'll go backhand. And right, Flurry sees that and moves. He's like, "Oh, you're moving off that post. Okay, I'll go to that one then." Right? Yeah. And he's he's making these decisions in milliseconds. Um, so so there's your drill for McDavid. Uh, it's simple. Just set up some sort of uh, device, whatever, and just work on moving the puck outside of your reach, and then collecting it, crawling it, getting it back into a shooting position. And if you want to add that deke on the net. Right, so if, if you want to, okay, we'll push it here, collect it, and then, ah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, looks like I got to work on, on my McDavid move. You can do it in a two-parter. Practice one, practice the other, right? So here, I might work on backhand, forehand, ting. Yeah. See, I, I use the real puck, so it's easier to flip up, All right? So, okay, again, what did McDavid do? He goes forehand, he moves it like he's going cross crease, brings it back this way, flips it up. Practice that like 10 times, then practice the uh, move, close hands, push it around, control it, and then combine them, right? And then try to do them both. Uh, clearly didn't do it very well my first attempt. Here we go. Uh, Goudreau, I like this one. It's, it's, he's looking for the open space, and I find there's some guys, all that space. I find there's some guys who do this really well in men's league. It's a great men's league move. When you've got defense that aren't that uh, capable, right? all the time you can use this. And obviously it works in the NHL too, right? Even, even really good defense, it works. Um, so Goudreau is trying to read their movement. Uh, this guy is clearly moving. Heading to the, yeah. he, he's moving backwards. He's committed to that drop. He's pretty much out now. And uh, Goudreau has space here. Like this guy, it, once Goudreau moves the puck there, this guy's he's done, right? So he cuts. 
this way, right? He buys that and he opens the blade a little bit, pushes it out. He's got space here too. He, he's got, basically he's putting uh, his body between the puck and the other player. And that's just, that's, that's great puck protection right there. He's in control. He holds it, he holds it. He's a threat to shoot right now. Look at this guy, done. <laughs> yeah, right, and he, he's got, he's gonna take that shot. He waits, he waits, he looks for the goalie to move. He does one stick handle, he's looking for an opening, and he just tucks it five. And his teammate's just standing there like, ah, if you uh, wanna pass it. I, like, I'll shoot it for you, Johnny, if you just wanna <laughs> put it right here. Maybe a little give and go, no. But no, no he, he's in, he was in the zone, he just knew that he was gonna tuck her home. Yeah. Right, so here it is again, this is a good angle, a, a good look at it. Um, I think this is probably three on three hockey. But you can see he's coming down, he's looking, he's a, he's a triple threat here. He could shoot, he could pass, and he could deke, right? right. So he's got a, a triple thro- threat opportunity. Uh, this defenseman's trying to decide what's he going to do. Uh, he probably, let's see. Okay, he's taking away the shot. Right when he commits to the shot, the slide, then Goudreau just moves the puck just outside the danger zone and cuts, cuts yeah. the center, yeah. Right? All and, at once, too. So, so if you want to turn that into a drill... Uh, you just set it up. So you're approaching, who is that? Hilbert, man, I'm trying to do a stream here, buddy. All right? So you can set up, so you're here, you're here, you bring it back and then just open the blade and cut. All right, and that's it. What, if the defenseman doesn't basically step up on you when you move like that. So if the defenseman steps up on you there, your move is to now go this way, past them. If you're, if you're cutting like this and the defenseman doesn't really step up on you, then you can go like this and cut across the top of the crease. If he's still moving backwards, he won't be able to, to get you in time. It's right? kind of similar to that fake toe drag. Yeah, so it, it's kind of like an if then, right? You're here, you go like this. If the defenseman like goes for a poke, then you, you, tuck, you pull it this way. If, if you're here, you go like this and he continues to move backwards, you can just pull it out like that. You can take center as long as you have the space. One thing that, um one point that I wanted to make. Yep. That Hold on. Let to... me grab the camera. He can, <laughs> he can hop into the stream. Yeah. Tips from Hayden here. I was. Uh, I mean, I... Grab your Twiggy. Yeah. Um, oh, we got 260 in the super chat. Uh, we'll review your yeah, super chats. She's been on a streak too. Oh, nice. Thank you, Nicole, for the super chat. Uh, what Penguins video says, it looks like Hilbert's head is missing. I think that's what he said. The, the stream. The... Yeah, it's, we took it off. <laughs> Uh, it was, it was, uh, we're working on clap bombs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Hayden, let's go. Uh, yeah, so essentially I was trying to think if I were to give one pointer mm-hmm. as to how to beat defense, what would it be? And I think one thing that a lot of people overlook is you were saying attack the feet, attack the stick. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can do that in a lot of ways by like thinking one way or the other or like programming around. Yeah. The thing that I try to keep in mind when I'm approaching the D is I like to attack like down the ice, yeah. not just across. So like I'll I'll try to put it like somewhere where they're kind of uncomfortable in their feet, um, or even like if we have a bit more of a gap, I try to like really get it as close to them, like kind of bait them even more, like yeah. watch their body language, and then as soon as I see they're about to do something, that's when I'll be like, oh, pull it way back. Yeah, and I like that. Those movements. So it's like, that's how it's, you really beat someone. If, if they're like looking at you like, okay, I think they might poke someone. And as soon as they poke, you're like way back here, they're reaching for the pocket. That's yeah. what you gotta do is pull it out this way. And from my experience trying to stop guys that are good, that's exactly it. It's it's right when you think you've that's got them, yeah. that's when they pull the trigger and you're like, oh, yeah, exactly. like I was so close, I thought I had them. Like, yeah, exactly. And that's where you were saying it's a, there's options, right? So yeah. if you think think of that, like make them make the first move. It's like the mighty ducks. Make them make the first move. <laughs> but really that's that's kind of what it is. It's like, okay, look at where they're moving. Then it's like, okay, yeah. this way, no, they didn't really bite for that. Okay, then push it back around this way. Yeah. So, so there's always options if you're attacking. Nice. I like that. Uh, down the ice too. And I think I'll give you this. Yeah, I think that the the better you are, like the more confident you are with your hands and your abilities, the more you'd be able to do that, yeah, to like you take it into the yeah. danger zone, right? Exactly. Um, like for me, I try to stay away from the stick zone. <laughs> yeah. I know that I can pull off moves every once in a while. Uh, 
but I only got some like for men's league especially you've got some good speed to go wide and stuff like that like, yeah you normally get to the net and, and when, when I see someone clearly like exposed I'll take advantage of that right but I don't often like um go to try to like Force put it yeah, yeah exactly and so speaking from like who did who did you just learn from Hayden probably gets about three goals a game like every time every time that we play he, he's he's good for like one to three goals each game so he and and I wouldn't I think my average was over two and a half points. Yeah, three. he had quite a few points. And yeah. I, I wouldn't say like you have explosive speed or anything like that, where it's like, but just like very yeah. calculated movements. Mm -hmm. That's what I noticed about how, how Hayden plays. I think the game. I Thinks the game, yeah. Very, very good placement. Uh, so we'll go on to the next one, and then we'll, we'll hop into the, the YouTube stream, and I'll read some of your guys' chats. There's Goudreau, Great Patience, Tux at five. Uh, who do we got next? <laughs> Oh. Swift 250 says, ah, you should dangle properly and you have to break someone's ankles. Comes from a Bruins. <laughs> <laughs> we got some, uh, some ankle breakers here. Coach's eye decided that um, computer says no. <laughs> computer says no. I'm trying to teach you guys here. Come on. I'm having all kinds of computer trouble today. My it's a PC <laughs> thing. It's a PC thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hayden took my office over. I was trying over. to edit videos and editing software kept crashing so i just stole jeremy's computer yeah <laughs> just hopped right in there all right there's gujo that's where we were a little swipe over here i mean i just too far. i just hodgepodge this whole oh here's a good one uh so this is matthews this isn't really a, a deke and we did talk about this in the matthews stream uh yeah. but it's a different way to manipulate right so matthews right there marner just gave him a draw pass he puts the puck out to, to fake that shot uh he's trying to manipulate the stick right and I and I you put it in order. Thing for a deep tube, you just oh, for sure. Shoot it there, yeah. And I put an option: speed, stick, feet, because I think the stick is easier to manipulate uh, once you you've got that down, and then you, you look at the feet, right? Right. And he, he so where he releases that puck from, it's just ridiculous, right? Mm -hmm. So here here's a different angle. You can see he's got the puck in front. He moves it out to the side, and this guy right here, watch his stick, right? He's blocking the shooting lane right there. Let's yeah, let's use, use arrows, <laughs> blocking that shooting lane. So Matthew says, well, I can't shoot there. I'm going to make it look like I'm going to shoot there. So what does the defenseman do? Well, obviously he moves his stick into that shooting lane. And right when he starts moving the, his stick into that shooting lane, Matthew's like, nah, I'm going to go back to where I wanted to shoot. So he, he just toes it around and see, see that, that's why they're pros, yeah. right? Just like inches, there's an inch right there. Exactly. And, and the pros are guys that can do like simple things really well, really well. So he pulls it and look where he shoots from. Matthews is shooting. Let's clear this uh, here. He's shooting basically like uh, a few inches away from that. Pretty upright too. Yeah. And he, he's upright, but he gets a good, hard, accurate shot off. And that's like when coaches teach, oh, you can only shoot this way or only shoot that way. If you can find as many different ways to get a hard and accurate shot you're off, net, you'll be a threat. Right. And Matthews, this is a, a signature shot. If you watch the uh, Matthews live stream we did, he does this on a regular yeah, basis. Like reviewed probably like five or six yeah. of them. <laughs> Ting off the post and in. Yeah. So if you guys want to work on that as a drill, let me show you one more angle here. Am I still zoomed in? No. Okay. So it's just, see how it's on the toe? We'll zoom in. Right. Where does he hold it? He, he, he puts it out. He's got it. Right on the toe. Yeah. He's got it right on the toe so he can pull it in. Avoid that stick. He opens the blade and look how he's already flexing the stick right there with that pull push motion. And then zing, Leafs win the cup. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. All right. So if you guys want to practice that, real simple. All right. Carry the puck more in front, move it here like you're going to shoot and then pull it in, suck it in and shoot, right? So it's, it's a stick handle. It's here. It's pull shoot. <laughs> Don't shoot. All right, and we'll, we'll try to get one on the uh, on the net. Oh, we got company. It's Mason. Mason Mayhem. Hi. What's up, bud? There are here. Oh, that's awesome, man. You're going to go play? Awesome. Hey, thanks for stopping in. Live stream. I want another popsicle. Another one? Nah, you had one. That's good. Hey, do you have anything to say to the people at home who are watching the videos? Oh, hi, baby. Barkster, but... Okay, thanks. Thanks. Bye bye. See you later. <laughs> Those are like the most like uh, offensive, words offensive like toddler. No, he's not a toddler. Five year old swear words you can think. Baby fartster. He's working on his chirps, guys. So you know. Great Mason's chirps. <laughs> right, right, my chirps. 
Uh, so we're here, we got the puck in front, right? We're gonna go backhand, grab on a toe, pull it in, and then shoot. I'm gonna go for that side. Uh, I think Matthew's... I think we should put the tarp No, because I, I never miss. Uh, right, obviously, right? So here, there, there. Oh. I, I don't think I quite got into my feet like Matthews does. And that's what you gotta work on, right? Yeah, really, I remember we were practicing that. It's hard, it's hard. So you can do it slow, right? To kind of try to bring it in. And I think he's more upright, so he can kind of get it in there, right? So here, oh, boom. And it's hard to lift the puck from that position too. It's so yeah. like uncomfortable. Let me try to get, <laughs> or knock any of this out. All right, here we go. There, let me try again. One more guys, then we'll, three hours later. Well, I want to get it down, right? Weight shift, like you're going to shoot. Yeah, and that's the other thing is, is threat, threaten the shot. If you just go like this and then bring it back in, it's not really going to, yeah, because it's like kind of the sweet route that can bring it over and back. Yeah, you want to make it look like you're going to shoot. So here. Never misses. <laughs> Maybe we should have closed the tarp, eh? All right, moving on. <laughs> uh, we need the button that you push and it just comes down. Yeah, the awning button. <laughs> <sighs> All right, here we go. Uh, so we're looking for speed differential here, right? Uh, who is that? Yeah, I think it's Barkov. Or Huberdo. Huberdo. Barkov or Huberdo. Right? We got the speed differential, and I like how he um, he puts his, up his arm. Like, just straight oh, arms yeah. the guy. Crosby does yeah, that. Yeah, like, out of my way, right? And, and we were talking about this in the stream, right? Everyone, like, coaches, like, two hands on the stick, two hands on the stick. Does he have one, one hand or two hand? He's got one, so he can continue his speed. He can push the puck away from the guy, and he can use the other hand. Look at him block, like, get out of here. I'm coming through, don't touch my puck. This is my puck, my puck, right? And he gets to the, to the next guy, right? Now he's just flying. We'll zoom out, so, oh! What happened? Pinched, I pinched the wrong way. It's because I'm sweaty. Is it <laughs> We're gonna find out, yeah. <laughs> okay? And then, so he comes up to the other guy, and he's basically standing still at the, at the blue line. Right, so he just sidesteps him. We have to have a better camera angle right here. And then is it number nineteen? Who? Who's nineteen? <laughs> Testing their hockey. Boom! Yeah, I'm so bad. I used to know every guy in the I, NHL. I think I know more than you, but I'm still yeah, not you do. As good as so, I'm so from a different angle, here we go. Coming down, like one hand puck protection. Keep the feet moving. That's the big thing. You want to, yeah. you want to get speed. Keep. Don't stop moving your feet. Right when you stop moving your feet, you lose your speed. Coming in here. He's got a little bit of a, a spot there, and this guy's obviously gonna try to angle him off, but he's just gonna power through. And look at the, the puck movement, right? He's in front, he moves it this way, just to kind of like, hey, I might go this way. And he's, this, this defenseman is outside the dots, right? So he, he does have an option, maybe he's gonna pass. The defenseman's like, uh, uh, what's he gonna do? Boom, right, just sneaks past him, and that defenseman is, is standing still, basically at that point. So you just need to protect the puck, keep it away from me. I like him. how you picked all Boston against Boston. <laughs> <laughs> well, here we got, we got Boston, we got Pasta, right? And this is manipulating the stick. Watch the player's uh, stick, right? He's threatening the shot, threatening the shot. Boom, toes it in and then finds a passing lane. Oh, nice. Yeah. Boom. All right, so, and, and this is kind of similar to the, uh, the one from Keller. Hey, speaking of Keller, he's on the wrong side of this one. Oh, no. <laughs> right there. <laughs> So let's see it again. Kelly, why didn't you see that one coming? So there, there's Pasta, right? He moves the puck out. So you can see that's a bit of manipulation. Where are you carrying the puck? What are you doing with it? Right. He moves it sort of to a shooting position. Uh, looks like he's going to shoot. And, and he's, let's watch the stick, right? Manipulate the stick. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Oh, here comes the sweep. Boom, toe yeah, it in. did well there. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, hop in. Um, you want me to rewind? The initial defender was the the threat that he was worried about at first. This guy. yeah yeah. So yeah. Like, instead of moving towards him and the net, yeah, like, I'm just gonna keep space between them, make it look like I'm. And he singled out one defenseman, the guy that's completely out of the way for his yeah shot. Right? Fair yeah. So so his assignment, he's just like oh I'll, I'll threaten this Good guy. Players continually attack two players at a time. Yeah. And they'll almost draw two people. That's why there's another person open. Right? Yeah yeah yeah. If you can get two guys to commit to you, you've just opened up yeah, one of your teammates. Exactly. Nice. And so that same move that we're working on with Keller, you work on here, right? Look at the toe. He, he pulls it in. You want to practice this move. It's carry the puck uh, in front, right? Get the defenseman right there. I was planning on having you in the stream as like the defenseman. I always have to hold the camera. You're just such a good camera guy, you know? You always get the right angle, right? So same thing. We're, we're carrying the puck in front. Move like it's a shot and then bring it that way. 
right? Just work on that, and then you can get a, a, a pass it's or a shot. Not just a toe drag. There's yeah. so many different scenarios that like you can use the toe drag, but it's different in every way. <laughs> like, yeah, I'd say that it's like more like a, a rule of the wrist, just yeah. to uh, like you know, it, it's not like a really exaggerated toey. And there's like it's more like to the side. Yeah. Less uh, forward and back as well. What do we got here? Oh, nice. So talking about uh, manipulating feet and manipulating uh, the stick, right? So uh, who is it, Coyle? Yeah. Charlie Coyle, beauty. Um, he sees, the, we'll, we'll look at a different angle here, sees the defenseman really committing to take away a shot here. Uh, and when we talked about manipulating the feet, go to the heels, right? He committed, his toes are pointed this way. He saw the guy overcommitted to try and get to yeah. in the position. Yeah. And then look at him, right? That's how you break angles. Yeah. It, it's the recognizing weaknesses, right? And then uh, he, he nice just, oh, he just backhand beauty right there. Let's get a different angle on this one. Nice one, Coil. Uh, so right here, he's got the, the shot threat and the defenseman's like, uh-oh, oh, is that Weber? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so he's no slouch out there, right? But he, he's got the shot opportunity. Uh, Weber's like, uh-oh, I gotta like get, right? And right when Coil sees, like, cause he's looking at his periphery. He saw his his foot like pivoted all and, and if Coyle takes the shot right now, I think that Weber would have gotten in the way, like enough to- Or got a piece of it with his stick. At least get a piece of it. The would have been able to get a better read on it. Too. Right, so, so right when Coyle sees that he's committing, right? Watch the, watch the stick and watch the feet, right? Moving the feet this way, okay, I'm gonna go to the heels, right? And he just pulls it in close and then goes, and, and Weber's done, <laughs> right? Go to his heels and... Like that he knew. <laughs> <laughs> nice backhand right there. So for that one, um, he kind of pulls it in close to his toes. Look at that wide stance, right? right? And he just kind of, look how close he brings it. He's maybe like a foot away from, and look at that. Really Good thing he taped the ankle. Yeah. <laughs> right? There we go. And then releases from right there. So for that one, I would say set up your, uh, your guy in, in the situation that he would kind of end up in, right? Like you wouldn't want to practice. Yeah, like where would it, he be providing the most pressure on you? And then you can kind of imagine that, like how did he get into that, that spot right there? So you want to go to the heels, you can move your uh, whatever it is. You can build this out of plywood if you really want, right? So I'm thinking the cue is that, yeah, pucks on the ground. You can do anything. But I like this because you can visualize, okay, there's the toes, there's the heels. I got the stick right there. And I want to get in like actually kind of close to this guy, wide stance, right? And like I'm going to shoot and then bring it in to my feet, right? Because that's what you want to do. You have a little bit of extra space right here. If you just practice this like, oh, all I do is go from here to here. You're not challenging yourself. Exactly you're going to be more successful if you can bring it in close to your feet because it just makes the defenseman have to reach even more. Obviously, if, if that space is available, sure, right? But if you never, like, get closer to the guy, yeah, right? Yeah, gives you more options when you don't have as much space. And, yeah. and then if, if it happens where the guy comes in and really reaches out, you'll be comfortable going here and then around. And that's what I was talking about, about waiting for them to make a move. It gives you more time to pull yeah. off a move if you yeah. don't have to do it when it's so far up front. Well, I'm going to go over to uh, the YouTube comments just to read some of the, the comments from you guys. Uh, but this this would be good with the swinging dispenseman that we built. Get right close. The stick is right there. And just, just work on like bringing, bringing it into the feet, right? And and you can work on the, the weight shift. Come this way, right? And then boom. Cause, and when you see, I missed that one. Oh yeah, well, and that's exactly what Coyle did. Yeah. Because it's already like close into his feet, he just goes there and then backhand shot. Yeah, exactly. So if you guys want to work that into a drill, <laughs> remember I never miss. <laughs> oh, I'm just gonna get a little closer. I should order a bigger net, so it's like, <laughs> imagine it's like a, it's a soccer net. Yeah. Wow, he's so good, he never misses. Yeah. Right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna get in close. I'm getting in close, wide stance, only giving myself maybe like a, a one tile width there. Um, you could start here. Obviously, this wouldn't be the starting position of the player, right. right? But just to have it in front, shift to like the shot threat, bring it in. Oh, yes, I didn't miss. <laughs> and obviously, if you want to challenge yourself, you could put some targets around there. Um, right in the bread basket every time. That was dead center, right? Hey, just like in the video, right? So, so after that, now you're looking for a spot to hit, boom. And now you're just adding more uh, challenges to your, to your drill. Uh, 
Giuseppe says Corona is fake. I 100% disagree. Uh, Hawkshot tiles are better. Uh, true that. I don't know what these guys are talking about. They're just having a conversation. Ho hockey shot for the win. I do like oh, Hawkshot, guys. Uh, Bud, you should go to Geico to save more. Oh, we're, we're dropping the chirps in the live stream. Um, there we go. What's your favorite move, coach? <laughs> Giuseppe says it's a joke. I, I gathered it was <laughs> funny guy, Giuseppe. Who do you think will win the cup? Toronto Maple Leafs, next question. Uh, how would you go from a deke to transition to a shot from a balanced perspective? That's Jake Bardownski. Um, and then he asked again. So, and again and again. <laughs> Jake, great question. Uh, pretty much what we want to work on in all of our drills is posture, right? Have your head up, your chest up, have your weight over your feet and just always try to be into that balanced position. position. Exactly. And the, so the more balanced you are from, from balance comes power, right? Right when you're unbalanced, you're losing a lot of your power and your, your abilities and, and your time, right? You, you can buy more time if you're always balanced and ready. So I would just work on uh, shifting weight, but also being balanced on that foot. Right? right. So when you shift, like, so when I go here, right, I got the, the, the puck in front, I shift like I'm going to shoot, I'm loaded onto this leg, I'm going to pull that puck in, I'm going to come over to this foot, but now I've loaded up that leg and I'm going to shoot, boom, I can shoot off of that uh, leg. Uh, yeah. yeah, so it's just a matter of shifting your weight. Yeah, if you're only doing it with your hands. Yeah, yeah, if I'm just like. Then you're only, the only power and timing you have is from your upper body. Yeah, it'll be pretty weak. And once you get on the ice, you'll be like. Like a, a shootout or something. Yeah. If you're just trying to like not give any cues or about to shoot, but not good to practice really. Yeah. Coach Dad and Son says Hunter says, hey, been training every day. Love it. Nice. That's what's gonna make the difference. I'm guarantee there's gonna be players like Corona, hockey's like canceled. I'm done. Right? But the guys that keep on training, the, the ones that are like, you know what, I'm gonna drive through, you're gonna come like 10 times better and leave everyone else in your desk because you put in that time, you get a little bit better every single day. Let's do one more. The only way you're going to the show is if you buy a ticket. <laughs> wow, we got the good, the good, uh, I'm gonna use that one. <laughs> That's actually, I like that one a lot. Surprised I haven't heard that, I've heard like so many. Um, we'll do one more move, one more drill that you can do to, to work on that and then we'll do the, the question and answer. And then you guys can all go have dinner. Yeah. <laughs> I just grabbed a bunch of random clips too. And remember, if you guys want to send in clips for me to review, you can uh, upload them to yeah, Reddit. If there's something in particular you want to work on. Yeah, you can drop them in the classroom. Especially if it's related to what we're going to be covering. Yeah, Reddit How To Hockey is another good uh, spot. Yep. So here, uh, Puck Squirts Loose. Oh, we got a mouse in the way. That's Sorelli? Who's that? Number 71. I, I think that's. Okay. Uh, 71 spots the opportunity. He just hops on his horse and hee hee, giddy up. <laughs> <laughs> right? There we go. So that's the speed, right? You got the speed, got the speed, gets around one player. He's like, yeah, I'm done. I'm just going to coast the rest of the way in. Then we got another, uh, some pressure coming in from this side. And what I really like is that instead of just skating in a straight line, he's actually going to kind of move over a bit and take away that uh, body position. And that's what I teach that a lot in battles is, is get that body position. So see right there, he's got the wide stance and he could just skate straight towards the net. He but senses the guy's coming, right? You're more of a threat from the middle because then you can go this way, that way, right? From here, the, goal, you, the goalie can see, especially if with a stick right there, he's got that shooting lane. Uh, Rask would, is a pretty good goalie. He'd probably take that away. So it's a, it's a two for one move here. One crossover, he gets closer to this player, but he does that because he has, you know, maybe like a foot uh, he of space. Every foot of space he has, right? yeah. And now what he'll do is he's going to get into this nice wide stance and he's just going to muscle it, right? Boom, he's protecting the puck. He moved the puck this way, he moved his foot that way, he cut that guy, so he just sealed him off. Right. And now, instead of from, you know, attacking from right here, he's a little bit over and he can go left or right on Rask. Right? So right now he's maybe a he shooting position. fought for the position in the middle yeah. with his speed and... Exactly. Everything. Fighting for that body position, he's got it. He's, he's attacking the net from a better position now. What do you think he's going to do? Backhand shot? Is he going to go backhand, forehand? I've seen... Um, situations where people will do like they'll just open the backhand quick and do yeah like the or, Patty Kane right yeah. he, he's he's pretty good at that, that yeah right exactly. 
Yeah, I think uh, McDavid, I mean, McDavid's pulled that one off a few times. So, it, Or you could do the Datsuk where you open the blade and then suck it this way, go yeah. forehand. But just based on the speed and also the direction that his skates are going, I'm going to say he's going backhand, forehand, upstairs. Yeah, I think, I, I'd say, I mean, I've seen the clip, but I don't really remember. <laughs> I'd say probably backhand, forehand, that's going to be the move. But another good one is if Rask moves on this one, maybe actually this is what he did. I just reviewed it like this morning. I think he, he, he another option, uh, backhand, like fake to the forehand, forehand and then back. back to the backhand. Yeah, that's another good one. Okay. So and it's all about reacting quickly to what the goalie's doing too, right? Yeah, yeah, you got a sense. So here he's got on the backhand, okay? So he goes to the forehand, ah, and then oh, back. Right. There we go, and tucks it in. It's almost like I uh, saw the video already. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, though, I didn't remember. But right there, right? Right when he starts moving, Rask pushes off, and then he stops it right there, and he catches Rask moving that way, beats him to a post. That's all you got to do right. on those dekes is so beat the guy to the coast. middle so that he could have more space to move it back to where he came from, basically. Exactly, right? But that's the thing. If he just uh, continued to skate straight towards, the, he probably would have been angled off right about there, and his only move would have been to go to, to, go to the backhand and just try to like shovel one up. Right. right, like, and Rask would be able to read it easier because there's not that other option. Exactly. So if, if he was still here, the the other player would probably would have gotten in front of him, and he would have just had to protect the puck and then just shovel it, try to go back in, and that's right. it. Right. So it, it's nice that he tried to get that seal nice and early. Mm -hmm. Look at all these arrows, right? <laughs> and and he just did that by taking one step towards the defenseman, one crossover right there to go. He's holding the puck right there, so he baits the defenseman. Right. That's the puck position, right? Oh, it's right here. Why don't you just take it off me? And, and then he sees the defenseman swinging the stick, protect. Yeah. He attack, he protect, right? And that wide stance, get the shin pad in the way, stick bounce off, all right, now I'm gonna make my move, boom, boom, and it's in that back of the net. So if you wanna protect, or if you wanna um, practice that one, right? Well, I guess this would be the goalie. We gotta put Hilbert in the net. Uh, actually, you, you could, right here, uh, work on, so the defenseman's right there, you wanna work on t uh, sealing the, the puck, right? So practice, you got the puck here, and you can use your mind for this one, right? Envision the player is swinging a stick, you move it this way, you push through, get that shot. All right, so that was just a, a backhand, a forehand shot, and if you wanna do it the other way, right? So start, move the puck this way to try to bait the guy, uh, and then you, you envision that he's swinging a stick, there, protect, backhand, right? Or in backhand. So just kinda of like use whatever thing, you can like lean a stick on a chair, Kick the stick out of the one way. One thing that you're referring to is like envisioning stuff. Yeah. It's imagery. It's important to like yes. put yourself in what the situations that you would normally be in. Like even if it's just imagining. Yeah. You have access to a hockey rink 24/7 right up here in your head. <laughs> yeah. You could be on the ice anytime you want. And uh, mental imagery or visualization, mm -hmm. uh, it activates the same part of your brain that actually doing that task does. Develop muscle memory. Yes. From imagining it and doing so when people talk about confidence and like, you know, uh, I'm nervous about something, you can practice, right? What are the things that happen most often in the ice? And it's, it's actually harder than you think. Just to sit down, close your eyes and think about I used something. I that before every game. Yeah. I think of like all the scenarios and like, oh, this happened. That's why you're so good, maybe. <laughs> right? Maybe, I don't know. And you, so you think of the scenarios and you play it over and the more detailed, the more vivid you can make that. It's like uh, replaying a movie in your head. The more detailed you can make that, the better it transfers to the ice. And you're just thinking about small things. And, and here's the thing. If you try this, you may envision yourself uh, losing or messing up or making mistakes. Right. Why? It's, it's your dream, yeah. right? Always envision yourself doing it successfully, right? Because that's going to build your confidence, right? Yeah, so sure. envision the... Um, you go to do it, you'll feel like you've already done it before. And that's it. That's where the confidence comes from. Mm -hmm. You feel like you've already done it 100 times, so you practice it. Um, all right. So we got... Question and answer, we'll, we'll wrap up the stream. Uh, I think we had a super chat come through, so let's check what, uh, what that one was. You've been scratched more than a lottery ticket. Oh, Pank, we're still dropping chirps here. Let's see if I can- Nicole D for $1.99. Sweet, and with any comment, question? No, she's just been- Nicole D, thank you. Every time we've done one. Thank you very much. Awesome, Beauty, love it. Next Th time, ask a question or say where you're from. Do you say <laughs> yep, uh, if you guys have any questions about beating the defense, um, anything we covered, speed, manipulating the stick, uh, going after triangles, manipulating the feet, uh, anything like that, let us know. And also, uh, if you want to submit clips for us to go over. Oh, wait, we got to go over. Uh, with oh, yeah, we got stuff on Instagram. <laughs> Instagram. Uh, 
where is it? Team HTH. Do I have to re- oh no, most Just recent. Down, I think to recent. Most yeah, recent. there it is. There we go. Boom. Oh, actually, I do have a clip at the end of this t- too that I forgot to uh, review. So Kabir Hockey, Deeks for the How-To Hockey stream. Let's take a look. Oh, I can't go full screen on this. What, what Kabir's got. Let's see. Oh, I think he, he, said, he mentioned that he was going to do the Datsuk. Oh, okay. Nice. Okay. Oh, beauty. And then around. So he, he's going, um, he's moving the puck towards, he's catching on the backhand and sucking it on the backhand. So uh, as opposed to uh, pushing it out and grabbing the toe, right? He's pushing it and then grabbing it on the back end. And I've used this, it, it's pretty effective uh, when you have the timing right. It, I like to do it if I'm approaching from this side, I'll hold the puck there and I'll push and then tuck it like that. You can also use it like if I'm cutting across, it's not kind of like you hold it, push and then tap. A little bit like a, a backhand toe. You just come grab it, pull it in, and, and you can, a great way to manipulate the uh, defenseman's stick right. right there. So thanks Kabir for sending that one in. Um, actually, I forgot. We'll do the Q&A right after this, guys, because on Coach's Eye, I had a clip right at the end. end. end, Yeah, yeah. Um, It was someone that I missed uh, in the last one. Here we go. Slap shot. Oh, and this is um, Road to AAA, uh, or uh, Biddles, I think it was. He changed his username. Just working on uh, the Datsuki and D crate there, holding it out. That's what it looks like to me anyways. And I like the setup. You just got a little block to shoot into. (laughs) Use what you got. Unfinished basement. Um, so right there with the Datsukian, right? It's, you're, you're here, goalie's right there. You're moving it here like you're gonna shoot. You push it and then you uh, pivot that foot, right? So my feet are pointed here. It's hard to do with the rollerblades or, or skates on, but it, it, you're gonna push the puck towards the net like you're gonna uh, you know, pop it up there. And then you catch it on the back end while you pivot and that allows you to carve this way and then flip it up. One of the things that Datsuk did well on that, that- um, you gotta get right as, as soon as he does the pullback, he moves his foot at the same time. Yeah, it's kind of like a, a methodical move. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really he's really got, and I practice that after. I was like, man, this is to tough. Practice it. The timing is the hardest the part. Timing is really important. So if you have rollerblades, you can you can practice that one. That's Biddles. Uh, and then we got a slap shot right here that I missed. So let's take a look. A little. You need to get some lights down there. <laughs> There we go. Nice smiley face clapper. I like the uh, the wind up looks good. The hand placement looks good. We got the bottom hand looks near. Looks like it's relatively straight back. The yeah, wind up. that's a good wind up. Nothing too crazy coming in. We got the timing. Here comes the step. That's good. Opens up that foot. Okay, so right here, I, I, the only thing I would adjust is the posture, right? Right. So, right. So so we're here, right? Slab shot coming back down, and you want to uh, have your chest up almost pointed towards the net when you finish, right? So it's okay to have a bit of a bend at the hip. Like obviously you don't want to be like straight up like that. A bit of bend at the, the hip, you come back, you come down and crush then and, and you really- You just want to point your chest through. Yeah, yeah. It's, you don't want to point it down, you want to point it through the puck. Because you're going to start with it kind of looking at the puck, and then when you end, you want to explosively open it towards the net because what that does is the chest attached to the hips, it twists the hips, it adds some torque to your shot, and it just brings the, uh, the arm around too, it adds like the, the, the torque to the stick, right? And, and that keeps you balanced and, and pointed towards the target. So right here, if we look at this shot, um, you know, a bit too bent over. And I'd like to see more like upright, not all the way upright, but kind of like, you know, 45 degree angle. Mm-hmm. So let's look through there. But besides that, pretty decent. Really driving into it. Um, that could be it actually. If the stick is short, it could cause it's you to be more bent over. Right? Yeah, a, a, a stick that is too short can cause uh, some issues with posture. Um, yeah, there's, there's a couple of the reviews. Let's do the, uh, the question and answer, guys. No more chirps in the chat. Oh, geez. I uh, got here just in time for the Datsuk flip. Um, okay, so any questions, guys? We got the live stream going. Oh, oh super chat from Swifty50. Thank you very much. Appreciate any question. He said, I hit the ice on Monday, the camp goes for four weeks, and it w- and you wouldn't believe how fast it filled up, and I am the king of church. <laughs> I'm Mason. Um, <laughs> we got old paint Mason. can, <laughs> sausages, Sticky, bunch of sausages. Farts. Yeah, uh, that's awesome, a four-week camp. Yeah. That's going to get you tuned up. Mm-hmm. Um, I heard you were the, la- the worst player on your last team, too. Uh, how do you do a slap shot from v- Vortex Exiled U2- YT? Um, 
slap shot we've covered this in the streams we got full streams on it i will go over it quickly we yeah. yeah we talked yeah i think our last stream was the the slap shot um the, the basics though, you want the puck basically lined up with the uh, toe of your front foot. It can be within this range. You don't want it ahead of it though, at least at that toe or a little behind. That allows you to, to come down and hit the puck behind uh, so you can flex the stick. You want to hit the ice or the ground first and come through. Your wind up, your, your bottom hand is going to be about halfway down the stick. A little bit more is okay. You don't want it up higher though, like where you would hold it for a wrist shot. It's got to be at least halfway, maybe a little bit lower. Uh, your, your starting position, I like to have the, uh, the blade pointed at the ice or the ground. You're basically gonna come straight back, load up that back leg, drive off that back leg, you're hitting the ground, you're really pushing with that bottom hand, flexing the stick, then you contact the puck, and then pull, push, motion, uh, transfer that weight. All right. Um, hey boys, check out Coach Dad and Sons. If you wanna check out another YouTube channel, there it is. Uh, we'll do two more questions. We got anything on Twitch coming through? Um. What's your second favorite team? My second favorite? I think we asked this before. And I, I, I said Detroit just because I think their, their logo is cool and I like their, their colors. Oh. Even though they're the worst in the league. <laughs> um, I don't know. Right now, I'd say if I were to cheer for a second team, I like Colorado. Um, I, I don't know. I've always like I, I liked, you know, Forsberg and, and Sackick and, mm -hmm. you know, like. It's funny because I could pick other teams based on players. Yeah. Or. Or just for teams, yeah. I like, uh, I'd say if I were to cheer for their team, I'd say Edmonton. Like it, oh, yeah. if I, so whoever's in the playoff run right now and I'm going to pick one to win the cup, I'd say Leafs, obviously I want them to win the cup. Right. If they get knocked out, I'd like to see Edmonton make a run because McDavid and Dreisaitl, like it would be pretty exciting. And I, I yeah. if they make it all the way to the cup finals, I just get to see more highlights from McDavid and, and yeah. Dreisaitl. So that's yeah. an easy one, right? Yeah, Edmonton would be up there on mine for sure yeah. too. And uh, Tampa Bay Lightning wouldn't mind seeing them. I love Stammer. I think he yeah. deserves a, a. I think he already has a cup, but. It's funny because I think I would actually have Boston in my top five. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Even though I'm a Leafs fan. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Edmonton terrible, says Lucas. Um, I really like uh, the, uh, the head coach of Tampa Bay Lightning as well. He started as a lawyer and he was just like teaching his kids' hockey team and he liked right. it. So he quit being a lawyer just so he could coach hockey. <laughs> and he made it like he was like maybe 40. Or like, you know, early 30s. And he's like, oh, I'm pretty good at coaching. And then he coached up to junior. And then he quit. And then got a job in the AHL. And then NHL. So, I mean, that's pretty sweet. Yeah, it's <laughs> inspirational for me. That, yeah. yeah. Uh, Kabir said, I had a second move in my video. Thanks. Love your streams. No problem. Thanks, thanks Kabir, for sending stuff in. Uh, so, we're going to wrap this up. I'll, I'll answer one more question. But before we go, uh, if you upload anything to Instagram, use hashtag Team HTH. We, we can see it there. Uh, we got the Google Classroom. There's the class code if you guys want to pop it in. I also have it in the A7 video description. A7 Hizzy, <laughs> if you want to join our class. And look, we can do like assignments, give you guys classwork. Uh, we can see who else has joined, right? How many uh, people are in the class. Right. So we got work due. We can do like give you guys work. So far, no homework, but. Yeah, no homework. Yeah, but that's what I want to do. Like once we get people in here, we get it going. What's up, boys? From GNR9. Nothing much. That's cool, cat. All right. So I just want to make like a community where we can uh, get some extra hockey work in. Uh, Lucas says, please teach me how to sauce pass. I'll give you a quick little tutorial and then we out. Okay. Uh, so for the sauce, let's get nice and low here. Yeah? Basically, you want to start with the puck near the heel. You want to open that, that blade quickly. And instead of pushing it like towards the target, that's just going to cause the puck to flip up. Whoops. I tried to flip it right over, right? So it's going to kind of flip the puck over. There it is. Uh, you want to get it to spin like a Frisbee, right? So what you got to do is go heel to toe like that. So opening the blade and then just going like that. That's kind of the motion you want for your sauce pass. Heel to toe. So you can, it, right. So you can work on just kind of that movement. Just work on spinning the puck on your blade while you open the blade. And that's gonna help you with your sauce. Then when you wanna execute, right? Then it's just a quick little twitch. So that twitch comes from right here. It's like a pull, pull push. Just like a, a little one as, so it's like the timing is as you're doing this, you gotta put some pressure against the puck. And that's it. Just that. So I'll, I'll sauce a couple over our DIY pass, um, pass rebounder, <laughs> right? So I'll, I'll sauce a couple at you. 
we built this thing. Too. Yeah, DIY passer with rubber. We made our own rubber, it's working well. Yeah. You guys gotta check that out if you haven't seen it. So here's the sauce, right? It's just a little flip over. Nailed it. And there's, there's different ways you can do it as well. Like if I wanna do a quick chip, I could pull it back first and then do that, right? Just a little. That just basically gets the puck moving towards your blade and gets it to climb up the blade a little easier. So there we go. Uh, any more super chats coming through? No more super chats. Uh, hope you enjoyed the stream, guys. Always come back and watch it. Uh, pull out some of those moves that we practiced, and then you can, you know, find. Okay, um, first you're gonna work on the Keller move, and then you can work on, you know, Pasternak, which is pretty similar. Uh, then the McDavid, that reach, right? Just keep coming back, uh, and you could do that throughout the entire week. Work on a different move every every day. Um, if you guys want to suggest anything, what do you got? Reddit, how to hockey. Yeah, where is it? Bop, 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 bop. You can right also there. upload some video of yourself doing stuff there if you want feedback. Yeah, if you want to upload videos. Us, you don't have Instagram. You, you want to see something in the stream, you can put an NHL clip, a move that you like, something that you're interested in, let us know there. Uh, also in the classroom, you can do it. You can drop some comments there if you just want to chat. Uh, yeah, there we go. So we got that in the, in the video description. And also if you want to join on uh, Instagram, it's at howtohockey. Thanks for uh, checking out the stream. We'll see you guys next Wednesday at 4 p.m. See ya. Later.